Hello and welcome to MGP 294. I'm Kev and with me this week, as ever, in fact, because everyone's back this week, it's Sheepdog, Anna and Pab. Say hello, boys and girls. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Thought I was doing the part-time schedule intro again, like I had to do last week, when some people didn't turn up and we had to get some hairy homeless man off the street to join us. I don't know if you saw the video. We just got a local tramp to help us with last week's show. And uh, he was all right. He seemed to seemed to know what he was talking about. Mm. Good. I hear that you actually spent four hours at an event. Yeah, we were waiting for Pab. All right, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I felt... I, <laughs> me and Bouncy got to EGX last week, or resed even, not proper EGX. We got to res last week at about, I want to say about half ten. I was done by 11 but pab wasn't due in until one o'clock so i thought it would be upsetting for poor old pab to get a message from me saying don't bother coming over to res i'll meet you at the comic shop i was half so, expect- i was half expected it <laughs> so I, I let bouncy lead me around the lead me around the event we went and looked at some board games and we went and played some i mean i played a few bits i played more in that morning at res than i've probably ever played at a gaming event in an entire weekend before it was good fun it was all right it's um bouncing as a way of just ignoring cues and navigating us through to just have a man pat me on the back and sit me down which mm-hmm. uh, we don't we don't seem to have that skill i'm not quite sure how he does it he, he was lecturing me on the way in about how we just had to have our press passes on display and wait for people to talk to us. And that's how we decide what games we're going to play. Unless someone notices our press pass and invites us over to play, we don't play their game. That's the bouncy policy. And it's a pretty good policy. I don't think that would work at EGX, though, surely? They wouldn't. He reckons it did. Now, now they've got the Dangleberry press passes that you have around your necks. So people can actually see you. Mm. That's, uh, that's how he does these things now. And, it, I mean, I saw it in action. It worked, so mm, I think it teaches them the next well, one. It's literally what I just said. You stand there and wait for someone to talk to you, sheep dog. And if they don't, you walk off. It's a little bit easier to do at Res, I think, where you don't go in there with any games that you want to play. If you're going to Big Boy EGX and you've got a list of half a dozen games that you want to play while you're there, it's going to be a little bit harder to say. Well, I'm not going to play those ones, but I will go <laughs> and play Prison Architect because the man's beckoning me over. <laughs> but what if, I mean, where would you stand at EGX at the exit and hope that they just call you over the barrier? Because the queue's that's a mile long, you know, we're near you. happen. You, you'll get on the indie stuff and that's about it. You, you, otherwise, I've got to get to back at queue. Yeah. And one in time queue. I asked a guy if I could have a, uh, I remember asking if I could have a poster to give away on the podcast and the bloke said, well, what have you got to trade me? And I was like, I'm <coughs> trying to promote your game. <laughs> He's like, oh, I want some free stuff. Trade me. Um, have some saliva, sir. <laughs> yeah. I think I gave him one of those uh, Hitman baldy toy things that we were giving it because it was that long ago. So, uh, yeah, I don't ask anymore because I feel like I'm getting grifted. Well, I've still got half a dozen of them. So if that's if that's currency in EGX, <laughs> we'll just take, that, take them with us and see what we can get for them. It'll be like the new paperclip trading thing that that man did many years ago that I don't remember the details of. A paperclip, a house. That's all I know. Yeah, well, maybe you should try that. Shout out to the people listening. What would you trade Kev for a, a hitman? I was going to say a bald man, and I'm thinking I don't want to end up traded. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching your vlog today, it seems that you still don't admit that you're bald. <laughs> you had the revelation on your own video to say, "Oh, I think I might be going a little bit thin on top." No, sheep dog, you're going, you've been. <laughs> absolutely bald as anything for as long as I've known you and you've only just noticed what happened did the sun reflect into your mirror and dazzle you or something off your top of your baldy baldy head you <laughs> have <did>. no hair <laughs> man Kevin, stop it. didn't even say that I said that my hair will thicken now I've got to rub all that there's no hair to thicken it's like right. me saying my wings will get longer your hair's not thickening because <laughs> it's long gone I might start rubbing it into my scalp, this testosterone, straight in. <laughs> I wonder if that'll work. Someone messaged me on, on YouTube saying that That's their mum... Bam Bam Bigelow did. That's how he ended up with all those tattoos on his head. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone said their mum helped their brother put the, the gel on and then their mother got hairy hands. So I'm thinking, well, if I just squirt it straight on my head... <laughs> <laughs> Do it. 
<laughs> What's the worst that could happen? Well, I'm worried that my brain well, will you end up with hairy hands if you've got to rub it into yourself anyway. Are you not going to get hairy hands? Uh, yeah, that's what I'm kind of concerned about. <laughs> Since reading that comment, I'm thinking, am I going to be the wolf man in a week or so? I mean, you've already get got some, hairy shoulders. Get some gloves. Just rub it in. Get some gloves on. Some, yeah, some cream mittens. Yeah, maybe I'll have to gloves. I'm worried about, like, I said to my wife, what if um, when I put it on, I've got to put it on, then what if it's on my clothes and I put them all in for a wash and then all their clothes get it on them and they all get become wolf people? Because the water drains away. And don't put it on your clothes. Put it on your <laughs> body like you're supposed to. Well, yeah, but surely some's going to be... I've been told, well, my sister reckons I can't go near pregnant people. I'm like, what? This can't How be... How often do you hang around near pregnant people? Well, oh, I my God, you're, you, you yeah. impregnate your wife on a regular basis, so there's every chance <laughs> yeah. that could be a problem any time soon. I went to like a picture on Facebook uh, yesterday and then thought better of it because it was uh, it was one of those Facebook memories of one of the baby scans or whatever. Um, and I realised that I have a Facebook memory of a baby scan every two months at the moment, um, and a birth probably every two months as well. It's in such a cycle now that I can't share them because people will think we're having enough one. Even the doctor said, oh, "Are you having more kids?" When I, and I was just like, "No, no, no, no." No, I just uh, had a big lunch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I might opt I for injections from this thing instead. If it depends how hairy I get after a week or so, I might just. <laughs> but then your head. then your blood vessels are going to get hairy. <laughs> well, they said apparently they could just yeah just. Every three months, just inject me, which seems a lot easier than me applying it every day myself, and a lot less risky. <laughs> it's probably just it's probably an intelligence test to see if you, or a confidence test, see if you've got the got the stones to say no. This way sounds bad. I'll do it the other way, please. They want to force you into speaking up. <laughs> oh, for goodness' sake, cheap dog! Just well, now now I realise... Ask him to put it in a pie for you, then you won't have any problems. You know, perhaps the fact that I'm low on, on the old testosterone is why I'm such a sissy about needles. It's all coming together. <laughs> but um, in a week's time, you know, you'll see me at Tesco's and I'll be just, you know, weightlifting. And you'll be like, what, what are you doing? Tesco? Yeah. <laughs> That'd be I'll unusual. Be, I'll be doing like those people who sometimes do their cycling at the front of the shop for charity. You're just going to be there lifting weights. Well, I figure I'll have, like, the um, basket in one hand and a dumbbell in the other. And, yeah, I'll, I'll just like Arnie, because apparently that's part of it as well. It'll build, build my muscles up. Um, I thought his muscles came from all those cigars he smoked. Perhaps you need to take up smoking cigars. All right, the last time you did that, you ended up passed out in yeah. the street in Belgium, so that's probably not a good idea. Yeah, because I lack the testosterone to be manly enough to do these things. But I'll be a cigar-smoking, chain-gun-shooting weightlifter in two weeks' time. Interesting. I uh, I look forward to seeing this firsthand down in London. All I've got to do is decide whether I'm going to go for the Arnie look or the Stallone look. Should I break my jaw? I don't know, you're, you're closer in height to Stallone. I don't find that an insult. <laughs> <laughs> He's like five foot two, isn't he? He's an Anatole and Stallone. <laughs> I don't know. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he looks up to Danny DeVito. He's a miniature man. Um, are you thinking of the right person? I don't know. Some some old fella who does <laughs> films and stuff. Anyway. Have we all had a marvellous week? He is 5'8", actually. Jesus, I'm taller than Stallone. <laughs> there you go. See? So that's the look you should go for. Because Arnie's surely over six foot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you won't pass for over six foot, Sheepdog, even if you on, if you stand on a step. 1.88 metres. I don't know what that is in... You, you get on with your maths while we have a Six one. Chat. I'm only two inches shorter than him. If I spiked my hair up or... You don't have any hair to spike. <laughs> this is where this conversation started. Mm. Just wear a top hat. That's your best option. I might wear heels. He probably wears heels. Wowzers. So, how are we all anyway? Is everybody marvellous and happy? Mm. And having a splendid yeah. week? Yeah. Marvellous. It's not too hot. It's delightful weather. No, it's not. It is. I'm wearing shorts. I haven't done a podcast in shorts for ages. I have had to rescind Chapman's law of clothing. Um, I've made that decision publicly this afternoon um, because I've seen what the weather's going to do for the next two weeks and I ain't staying yeah. in shorts all this time. So my I'm first... this one-off trouser amnesty this week. That was my first thought was how on earth are you going to uphold that law when you said <laughs> shorts? Um 
I think you could probably still get away with it if you just wore them under trousers. That's not how it works. Once the shorts go on, the trousers go away. If I was, if I, if money was no object, I'd just cut the knee, cut my trousers at the knee every <laughs> every time the sun comes out, and buy new trousers in September. I think he's joking. Uh, he's not. No, I know he's not. And Anna really shouted at me because I only did it to one leg because it wasn't really hot. <laughs> and broken. goodness me, did she shout at us on the way home from my dad's while I only had one trouser leg. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at him. Because <laughs> he's not funny. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure if I did that again today, people would chuckle just as much as the people in the street chuckled that day. You've got a disease. <laughs> look it was it wasn't hot enough for shorts but it was too hot for trousers it was the obvious solution mm. anyway mm. video games um yes pab what how are you finding god of war <laughs> you enjoying it pab you realize that i can just move you out of this channel pretty quick <laughs> <laughs> well you no, know we need to segue let's I'll see how long you survive on your own go on move yeah. us both pab move us both now yeah i thought so i thought so how's how's god of war going for you little fella it's not why is that um because it's somewhere in the ether or in the mailing system so it's royal mail delivered. Yeah, right. Well, no, it has been delivered, apparently, according to them. It's either been delivered to me or a neighbour. But no slip. Or neighbour or door. just any neighbour? That's what I mean. There's no, no slip come through the door, so it could be at any of the hundred houses on this street, for all I know. I don't know. I've got to go door have you to tried door. Just, have you tried just standing out in front of your house and yelling, did anyone take a parcel for me today? No. I, 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 have, you, have you tried the I, houses literally either side of yours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if it's the copy Anna's been playing on all day because our next door neighbour is the spitting image of you. So they might have delivered it to us thinking we were your <laughs> neighbour. my name. Well, I never saw that. I don't know that for sure. Have I think you you're checked... playing Pab's copy of the game. Yeah. Have you checked you didn't order it to the wrong address? Or have no. you checked it's not already in your console? When you just no, no, no. It's, it it's, not, it's not anywhere. It's, um... Well, you've checked your console tray. It's, it's not in the console tray because the console tray, the console's not been on all week. So how's it got in there? I don't know. Postman. Well, you, you're forgetful, no. aren't you? No, no. Forgetful, what? Pab. Is this a thing now? What? No, you've forgotten. You've forgotten. <laughs> exactly. Goodness uh, me, Pab. Sorry. Oh, no, mate. It's, it's just not. It's just not happening at the minute. And <laughs> people at the post office went, "Well, we'll get back to you within seven to ten days." I was like, "Brilliant." Nice. What seven to hell? ten days. What am I doing with that? Well, you buy a new one, and then when that one eventually arrives, you send it back. I could do yeah. that, but then... Spend it knocking on the houses. I'm, a, I'm also a tight northerner. Who does, I got it for 40 quid, and I don't think I'll find it cheaper than that, or you, at the same price as that. You send this one back to the person you buy it from now. So you go and buy it from game tomorrow, and then when the original one turns up, you take that back to game and say, actually, I didn't want it after all. And oh, get the game refund on the cheap game. Pab, come on, Pab. You call yourself a tight no, northerner. I, no, I was... I was, I was, uh, I was so annoyed this afternoon when I got in from work and I um, just saw all this nonsense out that I was like, just buy it digital, sod it. Just buy it digital. Yeah. Pay 55 quid, 60 quid, sod it. So you're not a okay. tight northerner. No, then, the, then the northerner kicked in at me and went, what are you doing, stupid? <laughs> <laughs> his northern shirt just gripped him. So <laughs> <laughs> his wallet. It's yeah. their safety mechanism. Exactly so. Um, so you're telling us you've not played it at all? Because Anna's been no. playing it for like two days. It looks no. really good. No, it's that's I, I've I've kind of been on blackout on on it since since yeah. what this that, is the, your the lucky day because Anna can now fill in the gaps with a detailed review of it. <laughs> last thing I'm going to mute I'm going to mute everyone in a second. So no, I'm not, always, I'm not. Won't that ruin the podcast? No, everyone else will hear it. I just want I just want to hear it. That's all right. No, no I'm not. I'm not going to spoil it. Like it is, it is day day one. Um, mm. It's day like, two for you though, Anna. Because <laughs> yours came early. <laughs> it, um. Thank you, Shop Two. Um, You're welcome. Are... Because you can't buy it on Amazon. No, it's a really weird thing about it. The you know, that, you know why that is? Pre-order anyway, because Amazon have gone nuts. So, uh, no, they've got a dispute with PlayStation. Not you can't pre-order any games on on for PlayStation games at the you minute. Can, can you can uh, Spyro? Yeah, but well, non like first party sort of things. Uh, okay. Yeah, so Detroit you can't 
Oh, yeah. Pre-order. But I've already got that pre-ordered. Does that affect the pre-order I've already got with them? Probably. No, I mean, like I said, Bouncy said he pre-ordered it. Pre-ordered God of War last week, didn't he, from Amazon ages but ago. I wonder if he got it. It would be interesting to question. hear from you, Bouncy. Did it arrive, or do I need to order Detroit from somewhere else? Because I've had that pre-ordered pretty much since it was first announced. Yeah, I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I went to pre-order because I had a £5 voucher for Amazon and went, right, OK, I'll go pre-order it, and then couldn't do it. I had to look elsewhere. But apparently yeah. there's some big dispute going on with PlayStation and and Amazon, they, and they're not stocking, they're not letting people pre-order games. We were there. asked about this on our Facebook group. And, um, our what? Yeah. That group you plug at the end of there every you episode. That you never check. Did you know. I thought that was a gag. Um, and, <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, my first thought, I'm just seeing who, who, uh, the name of the fella who, who messaged. I can't, the stupid thing's not showing me the questions now. But they said, I've ordered God of War. Well, I'm trying to order God of War and it's not happening. Do you know if there's a dispute on? You know, can you update me sort of thing? And, and I was just kind of like, oh, we, don't, we don't know these things. <laughs> I, mean, I found that off Eurogamer today, but you can buy it now. It's available on release day. But you just can't pre-order, so I don't know whether it's just like things where like, right, we're not taking pre-orders anymore because you're not doing this for us or vice versa or what have you. Um, but you can buy it on release, so interesting. I got it Amazon now, couldn't I? You could, could do it yeah. right now, and it'll be yeah. with you tomorrow if you've got Prime. Yeah, I do. Well, there you go. Then you can have it tomorrow morning or tomorrow. Oh no, tomorrow trust me, night, tomorrow, night, tomorrow night, morning. Night, tomorrow night, morning, night. I'm getting up bright and early. I'm going to call that postman the second. I'm going to be sat at the, <laughs> at the door waiting for him. Who are you? Where's it's my... probably a different postman. They don't probably work is. six days a week, <laughs> surely. But he, it, 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 well, it, yeah, you've got someone. Postman. To, you, got you'll someone. assault this one, and then it will turn out the other one was assaulted. It doesn't matter for your copy, Didn't and they'll think that you assaulted both of them. It was Mark Lee that messaged. I'm still unable to pre-order God of War on Amazon. Are you guys aware of any friction or bad feeling between Amazon and? Sony seems strange. The game's out in two days. Had to go to shop too. Yeah. I I responded, no news yet. Because I had a quick look. I Googled it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I went and Googled shopping, his man. question, saw there was no answer. I went back and told him. And I thought, mate, he, he could have Googled that. <laughs> well, to be fair, the news only came up today on, on Eurogamer about it. So, I mean... I don't know it came to his number one it. gaming uh, source of information. The yeah, portal. that's never good, is it, when they come to no. us with information? <laughs> I thought, must be a new listener. Um... <laughs> All that being said, please like us on Facebook. <laughs> that's a real thing. Yeah, you, got, you get a response from me almost we? instantly. Although it came up as uh, Richard Bass, not Sheepdog or Steve. So that's some sort of bug in the old uh, system. That's not. That's just your Facebook name, Sheepdog. Mm, what yeah. you need to do is set yourself up a facebook page as sheepdog and have you, that facebook page set up as an admin of this facebook page i could do it as lelujo now so, I, I don't want to alarm anyone but there's a 33.33 percent chance that mark lee is a dolphin okay. <laughs> cool. yeah i'm on the channel now and i can't see this not channel the web the, Can't see the dolphin. yeah you have to it took me ages to go back to it you have to click notifications on our group and then go down the notifications to see when he messaged but um yeah his profile picture is a dolphin and two humans so good i'm gonna assume because it's a profile picture he's the one in the middle yeah, yeah. yeah i mean sweet. we're looking to get into that into that sort of demographic so we are that's, why, it. that's why i make those noises every episode <laughs> <laughs> I thought that I mean, was clearly loving it to swallow crisp without chewing <laughs> sometimes it is but they're <laughs> remarkably alike I haven't got any Chris this week I think my wife's uh, slipping a bit <laughs> uh, no she just got my messages where I said look Kirsty please can you stop bringing him a bowl of crisps just as we start recording because he sits there eating crisps it was an odd decision like lovely gesture but a very odd decision <laughs> like oh yeah I've cleaned your trombone here it is you know <laughs> uh, bless her so, Anna, God of War. Mm. It's different. Different good, different, different. bad. Um, you Yesterday you were really excited no, by no, it no. and wanted yeah, me to no. play it on YouTube. I do like it. It is just different from previous God of War games. It's nothing, like, they are two separate I watched you play games. it for ten minutes and I thought you were playing The Witcher, not God of War. That's yeah. what it looked like to me. Well, yeah. So, 
yes because <laughs> i'm i'm aware pab hasn't hasn't been able to play it so is it if you've played god of war before it's nothing like that the only thing that's the same is probably the name and kratos so probably the only thing actually no that is the only thing that is the same from the previous games because it's not it's no not a of... clambering around hitting people constantly game anymore is it no well, th- there is that, but it's it's not go to this section and kill these. Go to this section and kill these. It's not like that anymore. Um, the whole like history behind what they're in is now Norse mythology, so it's not Greek anymore. Um, so, yeah, the whole I don't know how that works. Cause he was a Greek god and all that, and now yeah, he's but now in... he looks like Triple H, so that probably means that he can. Uh, oh, he can just do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. so I, I'm not I'm not sure how that happened. Um, he shaved just... his head and grew a beard. <laughs> that happened to Triple H. No, but like it starts off, and you're in a like this is like the basic start. You are cutting down a tree, and you're taking that tree to your house, and that is the opening. Normally, with God of War games, you are ripping someone's head off. That's what I remember from the previous game. Yeah, sticking something pointy into some giant's eye or something along those lines. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing that this time. Um, I was cutting down a tree. How many quick I... time events have you had in the first couple of hours? Because that was always the thing. This was full of quick time events, God of War. There is them, but they're not fighting. Okay. Um, obviously, because more of tree cutting, <laughs> kind of. Um, but it is more open world ish. It's not fully open world. It's, it's it let it lets you ex- in a. The world is a event. jar. Yeah, the world is a jar. So <laughs> you can go to certain bits, and there's like hidden areas and stuff that you can go to. I also believe that you. When you leave an area, at, at, you can go back to that area. So there will be... Because, like, there is a door in the first area that I couldn't open. And I believe I will be able to open that at some point <laughs> during okay. the game. Got to keep um, believing. Well, no, because the the way you travel around you is um, walking, of course, but then there is boat. That you can oh my god! No, 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 I'm done. It's it's just a rowboat. You're just going like because you know, <laughs> you'll you still a... crash it though. You know him. Oh, I, I crash it. No, he sounds well. It doesn't matter how much you crash it because it don't break. It does not break. Um, Whoever, whichever game developer is the one who got rich enough to buy a yacht and thought, you know what, this is fun. I'm going to put it in my game, <laughs> and then they all started doing it. I just want him to fall off his boat. Because it's boats are ruining video games. No, they're it's not because they're no, they're not because they're making it more open. And ways of then just going around on a horse or quick uh, fast travel. Like I want, I want to go over there. I don't want to go the scenic route on the boat. I don't want to go and look at the back of a horse. Well, can't they just put hot air balloons or something in it, and then is... Kev can fly there? Norse. They need an industrial revolution in the God of War world. I want to go on. <laughs> I want to hit the railroads. I want to jump onto a moving train. Well, you can do that in Red Dead. Uh, um, we were talking about that before the show. Uh, is Kev going to get it on Xbox, even though you're strictly PlayStation? Uh-uh. When's it out? Like November. Uh, Kev will do his very best to get a freebie copy on whatever they're giving me on <laughs> so that I can stream it. Um, it's, okay. on my, it's on my quite short list of games I plan to stream this year, so I'm hoping I'll get a review copy of something from somewhere, and then I'll buy whatever to, uh, version she wants. I'm planning to flog my PS4, uh, so I would like greatly to play it on the Xbox. So... But anyway, God of War, uh, there's you, and you have a small child with you all the time. I usually do. Yeah, you are describing Sheepdog at Comic-Con at the moment. (laughs) You address him mostly as boy. That's it. Come here, boy. It's a mix between me and Sheepdog, then. (laughs) (laughs) It is uncanny. We need to go further. It's not describing. Uh, Like, it is just, boy, come here. And you're like, 
How much he's hair is involved? He's, he's completely <laughs> bald. I'm wondering if he's just been given some cream to help him grow it back. <laughs> um, so, but they are father and son. They are just very... Fr- well, he's frosty with the, the boy, I would say, because God of War, he's seen some stuff in his life. So Maybe he it, traded his Pokemon Go items again. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, and there's not... The, there's not much to say, like I said, it's completely different from but it is very pretty um visually. Like the snow moves how the should move and there's footprints in mud and just mental things like because I, I I like to check things to see if it actually works and I do. Um there's not much like in old God of Wars there's a lot of blood and gore. There's not so much blood in there. But you do like you do take on loads of enemies. But they they don't they don't spill blood, which I find disturbing because <laughs> I like no because I like I like the physics when they have blood splashing everywhere and I, it doesn't matter because it's just a video game. But yeah, you don't in this one. I did start the game on the second down, like on the normal difficulty, and after about an hour, I put it down to easy because it was just getting too annoying. Um, because there is combos that you have to learn, like you have to always in in God of War. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I just want to hit things with my big shiny stick and not have to do combos and stuff. So I have dropped it down. Um, the first like main enemy that you that you fight is the most annoying fight I have played out of all of this. Like since I've been playing, I've played about 15 hours, and the first one is the most annoying fight I've ever had. And it's, oh, like thinking about it now it just makes me angry. And he doesn't even explain why you gonna why you fight him. And I don't understand what what that was all about because I haven't met because he apparently he was a god and now I'm like 15, 20 hours in. I haven't met any other gods. I don't don't understand what's happening. Um so are you yeah. a real 15 20 hours in or an anna 15 20 hours which would be like five hours for everyone else who well, doesn't <laughs> explore every corner of every area of the map i looked at the map of of the like the main area because it's like obviously off areas and i've covered 29 percent of it okay <laughs> So take that as you will. But it's, yeah. Because I'm surprised to hear that 15, 20 hours isn't enough to finish it based on previous. Oh, no, I, I've been hearing like 30, 35 hours. Interesting. To, to complete it. So it is a lot longer than previous God of Wars because you would just basically be going so like from A to B, boss fight, A to B, boss fight. That's all you would do. There would be a bit of going back and forth. But this, this is... Here's an area, ex- like, explore. And like the little boy goes, Oh, do we have to go like straight on to our quest or can we explore? So it's telling you like you can explore if you want to. So you should do because obviously there's little side quests that you can go and finish or start. Um, yeah, I, like I, I would definitely say keep the tutorials on, read them. But the thing with reading is get really close because, like, the writing is really small. I have been struggling. I've had to, like, lean forward a few times to see what the what it's saying because it is quite small. So I hope they address that at some point. But, yeah, I've put it in and played it. It's very good. Um, I, have to, I, I get annoyed when I have to turn it off, but obviously I have to because it's not great for people <laughs> even with le- not much blood it's still super violent it's still oh, yeah. the over the top god of war style hyper violence oh yeah 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 oh yeah you're not missing that it's just you're not getting all the stuff it's like it's it's like it's kind of like a little bit like the last of us on steroids a little bit you got a bloke you got a kid the kid likes but <laughs> because that's what he has with a bit of like old times mixed in there, but it got really good, good high marks on. Is it Metacritic mm, on yeah. there? And people are saying it's good. 
Um, I was going to get it regardless of, of that that um, scoring. I don't care for scoring because if I like a game, I like a game. I don't really care what anybody else says, but I like it. Um, I guess Pab will like it at some point. Well, eventually, <laughs> when he goes and gets it off his neighbour. <laughs> um, I had this like really awkward thing yesterday that I thought they'd like put a uh, a, a stop piece of code out because I kept putting it in and it just kept pausing on me like installing and it would not install yesterday. I find obviously I finally got it to install, but yesterday I don't know what was going on. But as soon as I downloaded the patch, it opened. So I don't. Know. It was just some weird stuff, but it's very good. Um. You'll like it. Have you got a pro? Me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, so you'll be fine. This week I got an email. Where is it now? An Get email. Neighbors. From... It's not because <laughs> it came straight through to me. Hmm. Um, what date was that? 14th April, last Saturday. Um, today is your PS Pro, PS4 Pro anniversary. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. That's strange. I, yeah. I never had one of them. But you got a little, little Crash Bandicoot and some some confetti <laughs> picture. Oh, well, thanks very much. So about a year. Excellent. Yeah, because people are saying that the, this on a normal one is hard work for the PlayStation um, normal one. Don't let it put you off because I'm at, like I have a problem. Mine sounds like an engine at times. I came oh, in. Oh, yeah, like, load. Yeah, we came out, we went out there and I came back because I left it on pause and I thought I'd left the fan on. Went to the fan, the fan wasn't even on, it was the PlayStation with its fan just whizzing around. So I need to turn that off really and not keep it on pause for an hour and a half that we did. That was silly. But it's not the weekend, so I've got I've got a stupid essay that I need to write, so I'll probably have an hour or two in the morning and then and then if if I'm decent red or if not in the evening, um but I have this stupid stupid work to If anyone wants to do Anna's essay for her, she was offering to pay people to do it before we started. I just hate it. I just don't agree with this at all because of What the writing way... essays in general or just this? No, essay? no, no, because the rest of the essays from like from the rest of the course has been fine. But this one is just annoying me because of of what you get from it and I just don't think it's right that all the work they've given us for this this module is as much work as we get in for the other module which is the worst worth 30 credits when this is only worth half of that 15 credits and we're doing exactly the same amount of work I just don't agree with it um so I, I, <laughs> I did play my Nino Kuni at the weekend because it's just a nice looking game that can be played with some more people around. Um, but the first one I did love. The second one is okay, but it is just basically go and see this person. They need something done. Go and help them do that. Then they make a friend. And then it's just the same process over and over again. It's a bit boring. Like I met this person, this this man who needed to get his daughter, and that and like they were gonna kill you. But I found his daughter, and now they're my best friends. And now I've just found this other guy, and he wants me to do something for him. Nearly done it, and I'm guessing he'll be my friend. I I just don't like that. It's just a bit samey, a bit boring. Um, but I'll, I'll try. Like the environments are pretty and all that. I like that, but I, I don't have like the need to go and, and play that. And then there's Far Cry, which is just mental, blowing up stuff. It's not going anywhere because I bought the season pass, so it's going to be here. I finished uni in about a month completely. Well, yeah, actually completely in two months I finish everything and then I can just play everything get it all out of the way until new games come out because it's this, like Detroit next month I think I think it's um, Comic Con weekend Detroit comes oh, out really? I think it might be that would be cool take it with us 
<laughs> We're not taking it with us. You can there. do. You can do in that hub because you can get all the stuff in them. Posh See? We well, have a switch now. We don't need to take a PlayStation. Uh, I'm this not time. allowed the switch because you've took it off me. <laughs> Every time I, I ask if I, I can I, play I, it, I, no. Mm-hmm. So, I started Kev playing playing games on that though, haven't I? And I check the friends list and go, who's online? Oh, it's Kev. Yeah, I'm not allowed to play on it anymore because <laughs> apparently he bought it for like for him to do what he had to do on it, but then it would be my birthday present. But I'm not even allowed on it. So well, I, I am point. getting you a different birthday present. I offered to buy a second one for Kevin! myself. <gasps> so, we have had arguments after arguments <laughs> about this, this thing. I just want to, like I told him, I don't want, we can just share, but for some unknown reason, he is unable to share. I, I like, this sharing. morning, I got up, I was like, can I play it? No, it's mine. I did not say that. <laughs> Actually, you, what you did say, me. I went, can I have that? You went, no, it's my talk. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds more like what I'd say, but he's obviously playful and not real. I don't know that, Kevin. Oh, you do. I really don't because we've had arguments over this. You can't share. <laughs> so what I've told him is, I was like, you keep it. Give me the fifty-eight pound that I no the fifty yeah the fifty-eight pound that I've already spent on it, and then you can have it. But oh no no no, don't want to do that. But he wants to go out and spend two hundred slash three hundred pound on a new one. Makes no sense. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, oh what you want me to get i'll give my argument as well if you want i'll let then people can let us know who's right my argument is we've got one each of every other console why are we taking the stand on the one that's a personal handheld console because the other ones you wanted to take out to your garage yeah you wanted to take the playstation what am i supposed to have in here nothing nothing so if you wanted it outside, I have to go without. It would not happen then. You wanted them outside, you have to go and replace. Actually, the PlayStation, I replaced myself, financed by myself. And then the, the, and the Xbox is because you wanted an Xbox outside. The only reason we got an S is because we have a 4K TV. It was, it was, it was <laughs> yeah. But the Switch can be shared. It's like every time I go on it, just, just to be petty, is that he changes who's in order. So every time I get it, I put my name first because he does it every time. Every time he gets is it Kevin, who is it? who's first in the list? You. Hmm. You got bored of changing it, did you? Because just to be petty, because I because he goes, There you go, you set it up now. Oh, thank you. No, I, I still I'm change out. it every time I turn it on. I just move back and forth between us because you haven't used it for days. See what I mean? <laughs> I like it. It's it's an awesome bit of kit. Oh no, I'm not saying I don't like it. I'm not allowed to play on it. You can plan it whenever you want. Kevin, you, oh my it. god, exactly. Exactly. And the only times you're playing it are after dinner. When can I play it? Oh, oh what well, guess what? After dinner when Andrew's playing you know what this burnout. Like. Well, oh, oh no no no. Sounds no. like we probably need one each. Don't want one though, because there is nothing <laughs> on it that I want to play. I just want to play the one game that was well, the two games that I bought. <laughs> mm. just so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I've been playing Stardew Valley on it more than anything. Okay, go on then, because you slated this the other week. I slated the idea of it. And... Oh, so so the idea of just just. The, the theory of playing a game instead of just slating it just because you've heard of what it is. You've actually come to that realisation that, that that is how this how things work, is it? What? You, you, <laughs> you always just slate things. You go, no, no, don't want to know, don't want to know. And then you actually play something and you go, oh, actually, no, it's all right, that. Yeah, that's that's the, called the Keb system. Yes. That's utterly reasonable. That's how all decisions are made in life. Um. It's all right. It's well, no, it's it's actually very good. I'm enjoying it rather a lot. I'm uh, nearly at the end of spring, just tootling around, and doing a bit of farming, doing a bit of whacking stuff down a hole. Um, I've just been to a dance. It's, uh, it's okay. It's a nice little. Are we, are we caught nice in little relaxing experience? I'm not that far into it. I'm only like two weeks. I'm on like day twenty one, twenty two of yeah. But you've spring. got, you've got, you've got to be, you've got to be get, get out there and start courting pretty quick. You've got to be out there 
showing your interest. What decade is this? Courting? What are, you, what are you saying? Why do I have to do I don't... I'm not in it for a hookup. I'm in it to develop <laughs> vegetables. Why you, do I... Why you need some I, help on the farm. You're going to need help on the farm one day. What, if I if I go and get myself a lady friend? Well, then I'll get a fella then, a big, big burly fella. He'll be more help. There's a few fellas in there, yeah. I'll get myself a you got to stay, you big got, you got, strong man. You've got to start doing He's got to go giving them presents and giving them flowers and things that they like. Give them some of Sheepdog's cream to make them oh, stronger so that they can uh, lift exactly. more stuff on the farm. You need to check your calendar and find out when the birthday's are and give them presents on the birthday. Oh, this is already starting to sound a little bit too much about <laughs> real life. Oh, it was all right when I was just digging potatoes. I didn't find that. I don't That's not it. something you can do in real life. But checking a calendar and remembering people's birthdays, I've got enough of that in reality. You don't do that in reality. Don't exactly, because it's boring. Well, he, he says that now, but when it's his birthday, oh, God forbid we forget it. <laughs> well, this, you don't get the opportunity to forget mine. I make people very aware of it quite Do you frequently. think you could even guess when uh, when mine was? Yours. Uh, summer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any more, Kevin? Well, he's yeah. only got one. <laughs> no, it's at some point in August. I don't know when. I don't need to know when. To be fair, I figure yours is what in one of the J months. Exactly. See, I know more about your birthday than you know about mine. <laughs> so yeah, Stardew Valley is rather splendid. Um, I've been playing a bit more Football Manager on it, which is the reason we got it in the first place, um, so that we could play Football Manager. Anna doesn't seem to be playing as much Football Manager as I am, which is a bit of a surprise. No? But no, yeah, it's it's a weird one. That I'd delete yeah. it if it was. <laughs> that's the reason we own the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, you said it was partly my birthday present, but that went out the window quite quick. Didn't well, I didn't realise it was going to be any good. Pab didn't do much of a sales job on it. You get out of town. You led me to believe it was just a piece of boring that had loads of old games on it. And to be fair, I'm enjoying the old games on it. And the, oh, the right. So it's a games. complete U turn now, is it? No, yeah. Oh. I like I like the fact it's just a fancy Vita. Right. I've been enjoying that element of it. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, what would you do if it, they got Persona on there? I'd buy it and play it. Yeah. I downloaded Don't Starve, even though I've already played it multiple times on other devices. I don't need to own it again. But it came out the same day as Football Manager, and I was perusing the store, which, by the way, Football Manager's been number one in the store for like a week now. Football Manager That's is bigger right. than Mario. Mm. Does that mean it sold like five copies? I don't really know. I don't know how big downloads are on Switch. I imagine they're quite a big deal. It's ahead of Rocket League and Minecraft and Stardew Valley. They're all quite, but they've also quite been out big games, aren't they? They've also been yeah. out six to eight months, uh, years. <laughs> well, on the on the Switch, I mean, though. Yeah. So, hmm. It's not bad, but like I say, till that price tag comes down, I will not touch it. By that point, then 2019 will be out. At that price again, I imagine. Yeah, it's 20, probably... it's 20 quid on iPad, so they have to have the Nintendo, Nintendo tennis tennis. put on there. Yeah. yeah. So I doubt it's ever going to be any less. I'm going to miss out then. I'll miss out on it. Never mind. Silly I love how you're waiting for them to go, no, Pab, don't miss out. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows I already tried to score extra copies when I was down there. Can I have some copies, please? No. I get one. <laughs> This is Nintendo now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Nintendo. Exactly. Um, but I'm also playing Mario Odyssey, which is excellent. Um, just how many just moons excellent. Have you got? How many what now? Moons. Moons. Hundred and. Moon? Are you saying moons or rooms? Moons. M- That's what I thought. M- you were M- saying. Moon. Moons. About a hundred and twelve, hundred and fifteen, hundred and twenty, I think. You've got more than me. Um, Better games than you, mate. Yeah, exactly. I, I did that in like three days. Perhaps. Sure, the little I've played it. Well, or it shows you how good at it I am. I did You're it in one sitting, it. one-handed. 
I haven't even plugged it into the telly with that game on yet. That's all. Really? All been, I've now been banned from playing it in bed, so my progress will be a little bit slower now. Oh, and wow. now, after several nights of telling me off for playing it in bed, she, really? now, has, <laughs> she now has instigated a full-on bedtime switch ban because I've got bags <laughs> under my eyes because I'm staying up till one, half one in the morning playing it every night. I'm not allowed to anymore. I can imagine you've got it on full volume, just sound blaring and keeping everyone up. <laughs> Like, I can't oh, hear it. I've got, I've got to keep the, I've got to keep the sound on. I can't hear what's going on. <laughs> no, I turn the sound off or wear headphones. <laughs> yes, but it's this. <laughs> well, that's why. That's why I started playing Stardew Valley because it's less intense clicking than Mario. Yeah, it is. What but were you playing last night? I had, I was playing Stardew Valley, but I had to buy thirty potato seeds. So it was... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> One at a time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So it was just click, 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 click. and it was that point where I was told I'm not allowed to play it anymore. <laughs> but I had to buy the seeds. I need potatoes. I have to sleep. We well, should have been asleep. It was one o'clock in the morning. Why weren't you asleep? I was because trying to buy you, potatoes. Because you, Kevin, come in and you bounce about on the bed. You don't make any attempt to be quiet. Oh, I do. That's me trying to be quiet. Crying. Mm-hmm. Cry- yeah, if if you weren't there, I'd be singing all sorts. Mm. <laughs> yodeling. I love bedtime yodeling. Mm. Until you moved in, I always used to play music quite loud at bedtime and go to sleep to an audio. Now, there's children. Yeah. I like quiet, very quiet. It's the only mm. quiet time I get in the day because either you're, you're around or Andy is around, and you both make so much. Of- <laughs> now, I, I have, I have a video of Kevin from last week on the on our on the landing floor, <laughs> crying and just being a five year old having a tantrum. I literally have that on my phone because you okay. wouldn't let me buy a second switch. Because don't need one, Kevin. <laughs> that used to go on YouTube, surely. He won't let me. That has to be a um, a goal for a, um, a charity live stream of some sort. <laughs> Balls to charity. If I get two grand worth of donations on Twitch next month, I release that video. Okay. There you go. Even better than. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. He's not allowed to take it in the bathroom. He's- yeah, what's the point of having it if you're not allowed to yeah. take it in the bathroom? Because of poo particles. <laughs> Have you met Kevin? <laughs> you realise that if he touches it, it's going to have poo particles on it. That's a good point. But I don't want him to put it on the floor and then him flush your chin and all his poo just out. <laughs> and I don't want him touching it when he's having a poo and and has handled his other areas. <laughs> I don't, I don't think I don't... he's handling it with the. Ah, uh, oh, you just reminded me of the most embarrassing. Did I mention? I don't think this happened since the last podcast. Um, there was this irritating Pokemon Go quest thing for getting Mew. You have to do ten raids in a row, and while I'm doing them, my son was sat in the car seat next to me doing his ones, oh, no. and he just leant out the window to this man who, who was hanging out of us doing his raids, and when my dad ate my sister's Kindle and pooed it into the toilet and found it in the toilet and it was covered in poo and he gave it to my sister. <laughs> and the man was just looking at me like, what is he saying? Um, and I had to explain that I... Dropping it through truth bombs. <laughs> I, I jokingly <laughs> told my daughter that I'd found her Kindle in the toilet um, just because I hid it like months ago because I'm mean. Um, and so what I just... a monster! <laughs> So I just gave it back to her on a whim. Just look what I found while I was in the loo. And she knew I was joking, but my son, <laughs> the irony and the joking was lost on him. But he got his, oh, I was mortified. The guy was just looking at me like I was an absolute psychopath. So look, you should be used to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Um, the other game I've played this week okay. um, is a game called This Grand Life on PC. Another indie game, Pab. Where have you picked this up from? Um, it came up in my recommendations because it's apparently lots of people who've played Football Manager have also played this. What? So it appeared in my recommendations. Were they in any way related? Um, it's, a, it's a management simulation game type thing. So, right. yeah, kind of. 
Um, it's basically an adult life simulation where you, you start off with a grand, hence this grand life, and then select what traits you've got. And you basically start with a, I think it's called a privilege point total of zero. And then you can buy other traits by spending privilege points so it might cost you four points to get a degree education or something or it might cost you a certain number of points to be um, well connected so that you're more likely to get job offers but in order to get those privilege points that let you buy those traits at the start of the game you also have you have to select negative traits that will adversely impact your progress so you might choose to become you might choose to be a lazy alcoholic who was born in a dumpster. Um, and that'll give you a whole load of these privilege points that you can spend on more positive traits. And then you set what your targets for life are. So you set yourself a monetary target, a knowledge target, a possessions target, a happiness target, um, based on a whole load of different scenarios. And then you literally just start off with your grand and go about your life trying to achieve your life goals based on the traits that you have as a person and it's awesome it's just so very cool um i did a video on it yesterday on the channel and i've never done a random game video that's gone down as well as this one has um it, it is a like a proper crossover connection thing between this and the football manager crowd and i think i'm going to be starting a full series on it next week because it's it's just really 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 cool and i think it's less than a tenner on steam it's called this grand life and if you like stuff that is all about like decisions and doing stuff like if you like football manager but perhaps or you like the idea of football manager but don't like football you want to do life manager then this grand life is basically life manager go go and buy it it's good so so do you control the actual characters you control your one character. You are. So do you, a well, you walk them around then, yeah? No, it's all it's, like it's football really, manager, clicking it, in it, menus. It like get a, it's no, no, nothing like Sims. You basically get a view of a Google map of the city that you're in that has icons for different places. And you literally just, so if you want to go and get a job, say you want to get a job at the burger place, you click on the icon for the burger place on the map, click apply for a job, and it tells you if you're successful or not. And if you want to do some work, you click do some work and a certain amount of your time number is used up uh, but there's right. no animation type stuff in it at all it is literally a management simulation type game similar to similar to championship manager circa 2002 it's that kind of graphical level so it's like spreadsheets and oh yeah it's and like i say it is football that. manager but you take the football out and put just real life in its place and I think it's really cool. And if you, if I, I'm I'm not doing it justice, go and watch the video on my channel. It's Michelle. my first look at this grand life, and it's it's worth checking out because, like I say, it's less than a tenner, and I put it in the similar category as stuff like Democracy and Football Manager and Totally Street mean. Wrestling and all these little things where it's just taken a a se- a section of life that can be simulated and lets you mess around with a simulation and see what happens. Um, but this time, rather than it just being a section of life, it's taken adult life in general. And can you, based on a certain number of restrictions and whatnot, go on and achieve what you want to achieve in life with the resources that you have available to you? And it's just a clever little game. I like it. It's super duper. Hmm. It does sound... Um intriguing i'm looking at it on the steam uh store at the moment i've added it to my wish list um i'm skinned for the next 45 days or so so i will wait and the really cool thing is there's only two people on my steam friends list have actually played it so i think i'm actually on one of these games early for once when it becomes the next big thing kev kev told you about it remember you heard about this first boys and girls it only came out three days ago it's been on early access for like a year, I think. All oh, right, okay. I was going to say, I'm just looking at it now. It says release date 17th of April. Yeah, that's All reviews very I was, positive. I was just looking at the new and trending thing on Steam the other day. No, I wasn't. It was in the new and trending the other day. It came up on recommendations. And when I looked into it more, it was on new and trending as well. And that's what convinced me to get it. But um, yeah, it's it's splendid. It's not on new and trending anymore. I'm looking now. It was trending for like a day. 
<laughs> I liked it. Yeah, it's got mostly favourable reviews. There's a couple of people whinging that it's a bit boring, but they're the sorts of people who presumably would find Football Manager boring and yeah, exactly. democracy if, boring. And you know. If you've ever looked at Football Manager game and thought, like the guy I had a conversation with at Insomnia, who I was trying to explain Football Manager to him for 10 minutes and he ended up buying it in the Bring Your Own Computer area and then moaned at me 10 minutes later saying, you don't even control the players. Well, no, <laughs> not listening who hasn't heard the football manager <laughs> oh seriously this bring your own computer area at insomnia they looked at us like we were aliens the little football manager row they didn't know who we were what we were why we were there they could not get their heads around what we were doing or what we were playing <laughs> they are very much in their little um overwatch fortnight bubble Counter strike and yeah and they just don't have any concept of what goes on in the rest of you think we're blinkered in what we play and what we enjoy this the lot the sort of folk who certainly the ones who were around us who take their own computer to insomnia they have a genre of games that they play and they don't even know other games exist wow <laughs> it's mad um, but yeah, go get this grand life. And now I'm, I mean, I've had two games to talk about this week. I need to go and have a lie wow. down. Oh, I've, I'm feel lightheaded. Where's my beverage? Someone else talk for a minute. I need to lie down. Okay. Uh, what have I played? That's um, it. Interview yourself, Pad. I, uh, thank you. I shall. Um, I've played a little bit more of Far Cry 5. I, did, I don't know if I mentioned last time that I'd actually completed the first area. I don't think I had. Um, but I have finished the first area, the, the bit in the south, oh, okay. yeah. and I've I've completely dropped off the game because of it. I was kind of like, what well, got got the gimmick and what have you, and I've just kind of gone. Eh. <laughs> and I need I need to force myself back into it because when I got into it, I loved it. Mm. Um, what I did play at last weekend, um, well, another week, you know, weekly challenge things that they give you, yeah, um, was to play forty minutes of arcade. So I did that. I that. So I played arcade. Um, I tell you what, people make some people. There are a lot of creative people in that community. Is there? They make some really good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. It surprised me how how creative how creative it is. And I think I got you can you, know, you just for playing it. You, there's like an experience bar, there's like a level bar, like a, you get like levels. I think I was like level seven or eight when I finished it. Mm. But I got four perk points out of it. So you you, you see perk points and everything carry over. Mm. Um, So if you find yourself in a a, a bit of a bind, you can just jump on the arcade for an hour and just rattle a load of points off, I imagine. But there's so many different varieties. of. I went on most of the journey ones, which just like kind of experiences and just kind of like take you on these, these people make these maps and just take you like, oh, just go this way, follow it. And there's, if you know, follow around this way, go up here, do that, and just experience this world that they've built. Hmm. Uh, but then there's others that there's a multiplayer in it. This whole multiplayer, there's someone made a PUBG mode in that game in the arcade mode, oh. which is insane. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been like they only have to play 40 minutes and you get a, you get a new gun and an outfit for, for doing it. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. And I think I'll probably continue to do that just weekly, get to do the weekly events because it kind of forces me back into the game. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll I'll get back into it sort of thing and start start like enjoying it again because like I say I just I did that first area and I just kind of went right I've done it now and I kind of just didn't want I wasn't interested in going back I didn't even get to the second area I was just like uh, don't want to do all this all over again don't want to go back to a t- an area f- filled with like redneck people trying to kill me every five seconds on the roads and. Mm-hmm. Stuff like that because it, it dies down. Found, yeah, I haven't found that in the uh, second area at so. all. Really? Mm. Oh well, hopefully that is the case because like that first area, every five you can't go down the road because every five seconds mm. there's a car pulling up going, "Hey, what are you doing?" You you like okay, I'll get I'll get into the fields and up the hills and what have you. Oh, there's a grizzly bear there. I've just got to deal with that now. You can't can never get to where you want to go because you run out of ammo every time you get to somewhere. Yeah. Bonkers, but um, um, that's. Far Cry 5. What else have I played this week? Um, I'll tell you what I have played. Uh, because I've got a new phone, I have um, I mean, that has a decent battery now. I've what phone it. did you get, Pab? I'm not going to tell you. 
Because I got what, what phone did you get? I got a Huawei P20 Pro. You're gonna go, what? what's that? Exactly. That's why I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, it's it's China's best phone that you can have. But we're not in China. <laughs> no, but China make good products. Um, so but it's got amazing battery life on it. It's pretty much got a two day battery life on it. I would have thought so, you'd have got that new Razer phone that is like no because this. it's it's all about wanting to play games and stuff like that. And I was like, I don't, wanna, I don't care. This, this this phone is amazing. This phone is like what they're comparing to, like they're better or as good as an iPhone X and the new Samsung Galaxy. It's got a, it's got three cameras on the back. It's insane how, how, how much detail you can get on this pitch. Anyway, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> I decided to look on games just just because I thought I could because I've never the last two years I've not really played games because the battery life was horrendous on my old phone. Mm-hmm. I just never played mobile games, so I play. I just looked on the store. I went, okay, what's on here? And then I got a game called Baseball Boy, which is just just a game basically where you, you've just got a, a like a like a metronome thing where you've got to where it's just moving like across the screen and you just go hit it in the middle, and then you it's the ball. And you just, you just hit see how hard you can hit the ball, and then you get so far, and then you level up, and you can do more percentage, more power to it, or just like upgrade things about on power, bounce, and speed, I think some of that, and you can add them every time you get because you get so far, you get like a thousand meters, you get a thousand dollars to do it for for doing it, and then you buy the upgrades that way, and it's just a nice little game that I'm just playing here and there. Um, I had to, I had to take, I had to. Get remove the ads from it and pay two quid or whatever it was to remove the ads because the ads were horrendous. Every single every single time I had a, a swing at the baseball, I had an ad. I was like, <laughs> I, I can't, watching one of my videos, I can't play a game like that where every twenty seconds there's an ad come up. No, I cannot do it. I cannot do it. So I bought as remove the ads, um, and there's no sound on it either. I don't know why there's no sound on the game. We doesn't really have speakers. Yeah, yeah, there's no sound on the game at all. And I'm like, it feels like there should be sound, but mm-hmm. there isn't any. So, But it doesn't bother me because I listen to podcasts while I'm doing it, while I'm playing it, like, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, yeah, I've just kind of been addicted to that at the minute, just, just playing it here and there. Just, I've got a spare five minutes, I'll just put that on, see if I can beat my, beat my current distance and get some more upgrades and more monies. Um, I'll probably get tired of it in a week or two, but it's, it's, it's in my... Creeping back into the mobile gaming world, um, I'll find more things in the in the near future. Um, the other thing I've been playing mainly this week, I have been playing Fortnite. Um, okay. Quite a lot of Fortnite. Um, not playing with us, I know. No, no. Well, I was sat here waiting for you. I expected it at some point this week. <laughs> You're allowed to invite us. No, but no, no, no. I'm here to I'm here to be called upon. I don't I don't send out the signal. <laughs> um, I've so, tried to join you. Yeah? It just yeah. doesn't work. I've just, I've just been play. I don't, I don't know why. I've, I real, I realised the battle pass. You know the battle pass thing that I've got that you, I pay mm. seven quid to get the battle pass, and you, I was like, it ends in it end, the season three ends in two weeks. So I was like, oh, I better start getting some of these, some of these levels, and realised half of these challenges that you get aren't about kills. So the one challenge just go, go and visit the the crab. The fox and the yeah. llama. It's mm. just like literally just go to go to work, go to each of them them big wooden sh- structures in the corners of the map. Just go to there, and it just ticks them off one at a time. And go go find three petrol stations. Uh, go and do, um, go and find this treasure map in this area, and go find out where it is you've got to go. So I'm, I'm not even trying to play the game anymore. I'm just running around going. I don't want to know. I'm playing it like we do. Just like anyway, and then, <laughs> but I found myself playing better because of it because I'm not even trying. I ended up coming fourth, I think, in one game with four kills, just running around, just doing what I'm doing. And just people, I come across people, and like, oh, you're dead, you're dead, just getting rid of them. Not even, it's insane. Um, so I've got to level fifty four now. Wow. Um, so I've been playing. Just mean a bit. you're going to be any good next time we play? If you're no, 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 that's so that games now. No, no, I won't be any good I'm, unless yeah, I unless so. unless I, unless you want to know where certain things are because I know I know the map. I had the map on my second screen, so I could pinpoint exactly where things were. <laughs> it made it easier for me to actually see what I was doing to have the map up on the second screen. So I know where a lot of things are now. Um, 
but yeah, I, I've this week I think I've probably played about six to eight hours of it, which yeah. is insane. I, I, I hadn't planned on it. I just went on it once to, to update it, and I just went, okay, I'll click on it now, <laughs> and then, then lost two days to it. So, um, wow. yeah, that is pretty much all I've been playing this week. I was planning on God of War, but who knows <laughs> when I'll be playing that. What went then. wrong there, then? Did you not play it in the end? Not fancy it? Not this week. Maybe next week. Oh, if the Royal Mail get the finger out. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So, any more for any more on games, or are we moving on? We're good. No, I'm still been trying to get these damn Kerbals into space oh. for any kind of time or planet landing or anything, but I'm terrible at it, and I haven't watched any videos like you told me to, so I can't really... Have you tried building them a spaceship? Yeah. What I find is um, they either don't get high enough that they get into space or they go off into space and then I have to try and figure out how the hell I'm going to get them back. Um, I can't that seem feels to get... like something you should figure out before they take off. Yeah. I don't actually know whether they can die because I kind of oh, yeah. can't, I cancel it all back before that happens. So I don't really know whether they are dying because they oh, no, to you, still you be do there. that. But I mean, if you let it happen, it, they will die. If you let it smash it to the ground, that's it. They done. Yeah. I think I've been, avoiding that from happening just because i was scared of yeah losing my one experienced pilot i never let the other one out basically i've got a male and a female pilot and i never let the female go in until the rockets right <laughs> the man is just going through all the battery and he died hundreds of times um when i once i've got it right i'll let the lady go I, I'm, I'm a gentleman like that or a sexist pig who doesn't think the lady can handle it i don't want her to die i could send her out i suppose <laughs> So, movies, TV. I don't I've uh, in this category. I've got. I'm. I'm yes, on is. mid-season six on Weeds now. Um, are you that far, or are you further? Uh, where do they currently live? Uh, I can't remember. They work in a hotel. Oh yeah, we're past that. Okay. <laughs> I um was a bit surprised that uh Celia just leaves. Stops. Mm-hmm. That was interesting. My uh, my wife texted me saying she just left the show in season five, and that was it. And then on the she show, went back it... to being Wilma Flintstone. That wasn't what she did. That's what she did before, though, wasn't it? No. Yeah, was she it? was Wilma out of the Flintstones film. Was she? No, she, she wasn't. She was, because I looked her up when she just stopped being in it as well, <laughs> and. um to see if she'd left or if she was coming back. She had left, and on her resume was being Wilma in the Flintstones movie. Yeah, she was movie? the old one. The old one, I'm looking at it now. Okay. Well, I yeah, she's not Halle Berry, who I believe was also no. Wilma at some point. Wasn't no, she? no, Halle Berry was just a woman in the I film. In the first one, yeah. Um, okay. That woman from Third Rock in the Sun. Yeah. Knit yeah, Third right. Rock, whatever yeah, it's called. Right. Third Rock from the Sun, yeah. From the sun, not in the sun. We uh, watch that program every morning, and every morning I watch if she ever did anything else because I don't recognise her from anything ever. I watched the the Viva Rock Vegas. Is it Viva Rock Vegas? Something like that. The second yeah. one. Yeah, oh, that's terrible. I watched that with the kids because the other two were relatively famous film stars, aren't they? Oh, well, the the two oh, of yeah. them are, and then there's the weird man and the woman who I've never seen anything else. <laughs> that's the man whose eyes just don't open. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I imagine he probably got a pair of glasses and he's never been seen since because he's fascinated by the world. <laughs> um, but no, that made the whole programme feel odd to me anyway, with the fact that they basically, because I'm guessing... It would have been even odder if she'd have followed them around the country. Well, no, because it ended with her having a massive, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start my own project and it's going to be great. Look at all this story that I've got laid out before me. And then it was like, yeah, <laughs> we're not going to do that. Um, but they wrote out our entire family and everything, haven't they? So that's odd. But no, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it finished. It feels like I've been watching it forever now. <laughs> um, we haven't watched it for a little while now. We need to get back into it. I, I still really, really like it. Doug in that is possibly my favourite character in any TV show ever. He Doug is, is good, just a man. hero. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that he found a way back into it. 
it, yeah, that's what I mean. It's it would be ridiculous to have more than one character who just follows them around the country or wherever they go for no reason. <laughs> despite having, I mean, he was just the local councillor. There's yeah. no reason for him to be following them around the country the way he does. Well, as it, he had been in, in a couple of episodes, and then he just wandered into the house that had been trashed with a bucket of chicken, looking for him to hang out with some chicken. <laughs> and now he's back in it. And I was like, that is how you'd want to be a character in a program. You'd want to be just the guy who rocks up like that. Um, yeah, that's been really cool. I'm trying to think what else. I don't think we've watched anything new. I start actually when I say that I started the uh, Lost in Space. Me Netflix too. Series. Um, I'm not sure about the family or hate the robot. The, I hate the mom. She annoys yeah, me. Yeah. Uh, the dad's all right. Uh, the boy annoys me, and the sister is all right. And then that other, I believe she's adopted. She also annoys me. The one in the ice. They should have just let her die. Yeah. <laughs> what is this program? People keep talking about it. I don't understand why this is a thing. In the 80s, maybe further back. Oh, I'm too yeah. young to remember it then. I, um, I remember Lost in Space with Matt LeBlanc, or Matt Le- whatever his name is. Yeah, so it was a TV really series good. that was, like, moderately popular in America. Yeah. Um, and then they made a film with Matt LeBlanc that was a flop. Like, I watched it. I enjoyed it as a kid, but it was a flop, apparently. Um it. And then this one is like Netflix trying to do it with a bit more flair and grit to Money. it. And yeah, Netflix yeah. Um, it seems like it'll be all right. I feel can't even the first episode if the cast just don't feel right, then it, it's a bit. Uh, and I feel like this. I feel like the girl, the girl that they kind of tried to create drama around, just seemed a bit too plain and weird and the robot seems a bit overdone it's a bit like my one criticism of the power rangers film was the megazord didn't really have any personality it was just a a, an overly polished robot and this is how this one just feels it's a bit too oh we're trying to look like it's an advanced race built in it's all fancy when actually the the charm of the original robot was it was this weird looking load of nonsense um yeah i'm not expecting Sorry, I was going to say, isn't it, isn't it an alien built this time? Whereas the last one was built by the family, wasn't it? That's what, yeah. If I understand it right, the, the the robot in the original was just their robot, yeah, and yeah. its and its job was to like follow them around and look after them and alert yeah. them to danger. Whereas this one seems to be an alien, either robot or species. How have um, I never heard of this thing that you like all seem to be well aware? of? Because it has, uh, oh no, it doesn't have star in the title, does it? it? So it's about space, though. It has space in the title. That's a bit of a red flag as well. Yeah. Um, I was a bit annoyed also that the robot said Danger Will Robinson in the first episode. I felt like they didn't need to be that on the the nose with it all. It was kind of like you could have saved that for a few episodes. Yeah, build it Um, up. Because it seemed to learn, learn English very quick, although I guess... But he's only said them words, hasn't it? Like I've only watched three episodes, and that's all I've ever heard him say. Mm, okay, because I don't know. I just felt like I was like, "That's your robot, is it?" It doesn't. It doesn't look anything like the old one. I mean, I'd have been annoyed if they'd have wheeled out a weird, clunky old robot too. But but he um, was going to kill him, wasn't it? That's what I got. No, he thought it was going to kill him. It just needed him to piece it back together. I think I don't know. So why did he what? When in the first one, why? Because it was behind him, wasn't it? Because the legs chasing him, and the body was behind him, and it went, it went to him and rip and and cut his arm, like his his clothes. Have you seen any more of it? Have you I've only seen, seen the, the first I've... episode, but oh. I know. But maybe it was. Maybe it's just reacted. Okay, to... no, I'll be. I'm gonna yeah. be quiet. Watch at least one more. And then you'll understand like what I'm Well, doing. my theory was going to be, I wonder whether, because they're in that space station, aren't they? Yeah. And, and and I'm wondering whether it's come across humans and thought, what the hell is this? And it's gone a bit mad. And then it's mm-hmm. met met uh, Robinson and just thought, oh, actually, they're all right. Whoops. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? My mistake, <laughs> um, and, and maybe that'll be part and parcel of it that they've got off on the wrong foot. I don't know, but um, 
I'll see. It's worth a, a revisit. It's just that with with that, I mean, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and all of those, they've all been really good. Um, I've kind of not Ooh. had time. We have watched something new, Anna. Oh. Runaways. Oh. Oh yeah. Did a Marvel one. Yeah. 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 I've not seen Pretty it. Good. But... Have you two read the comic? Nope. No. Nope. I know about. I know the premise. Right. You need to read the comic. You just have to. It's the law. It's I've heard the Bon Jovi song. Excellent. Um, this they've they've basically taken the comic, yeah, and for an hour long episode of the show, they've got like like so the first episode of the show, an hour long. It's taken issue one of the comic and put yeah. that in the last five minutes or so, mm-hmm. and oh, filled absolutely. the filled the fifty five minutes before it with a teen drama. Backstory. What did I tell you? What a teen drama. Um, I'm giving it the opportunity to not be rubbish. Um, we're partway through episode two, but Anna went to bed. Um, yeah. And the ep- episode two, the kids aren't in at all so far. They're just focusing on the adult drama of the parents, which again, it's yeah, it's filling in an awful lot of backstory that. I mean, Got to, it? They, they, but they weren't telling us anything that we didn't already know from the original comic series. What they've done is... Well, I didn't know. No, I know. But what they've done is they're telling the story in a very, very different order to how it is in the comic. And some of the stuff that are massive, awesome reveals in like issue two or three, they've already shown us as part of the backstory in episode one and then led into issue one of the comic. And I feel like at this point, the initial run was only a six issue comic series. I'm assuming that's going to be what they tell in this first series. I'm trying to think of any made any more major plot points that actually happen that they haven't already at least heavily, heavily teased in that first episode. And there's maybe one major plot point that hasn't been thrown out already in episode one. So either that was all fan service and they're going to veer off in their own direction from episode two. Or they're going to try and cram five arcs of this into a series. Or they're just idiots and they've just blown their load in episode one. And it didn't, wasn't very good anyway. But I'm, I'll give, give it a chance because it's one of my favourite comics ever. So I will watch it all. Uh, well, I'll watch it as long as I can stomach it. it. We might have preacher syndrome all over again where I get I get so far and just can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. At the moment, I'm willing to give it a few more episodes. But well, you it... moaned when I turned it off. Oh yeah, I wanted to see the end of it. I mean, it, it's it's annoying when when programs get turned off halfway through. I was um, tired. I know you were. Um, but yeah, it was. Yeah, the frustrating thing is Brian K. Vaughan is he's got a producer credit. I assume he's not actually involved. He just gets a producer credit because he wrote the thing. Yeah. Um, but there's, I forget who it was. There's someone else who's heavily involved in Marvel Comics who's also got a credit on it. Stanley. Who, as far, and him and someone else. Um, <laughs> who, as far as I can tell, wasn't involved in the original Runaways. I don't know if some of the later arcs, because Vaughan was only involved in the first three arcs, I think, of this. Um, so yeah, maybe he wrote subsequent there. ones. No, it wasn't Bendis. It was someone else. And I can't remember off the top of my head who it was. Um, but it it feels like there is quite heavy Marvel involvement, and if if they are heavily involved, they need to have a word with themselves because they've 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 teen dramaed it. Well, which I guess they, I guess they've looked at the Arrowverse and thought Riverdale and Riverdale. Yeah, and Riverdale. Yeah, yeah, and it's. It's a shame because it's it's brilliant. Runaways, the comic, is brilliant. And, I mean, I guess... I, I mean, even looking at that first arc, the first, the first arc is brilliant. The first six issues are brilliant. It does go a little bit haywire from there in the comics. It never reaches those heights of that first, first arc. So maybe it should have just been a movie to tell that six-issue story. And then I might have been happy. But then it's not a big enough name to be a movie because no one's ever heard of it. I don't know. I, they could have like launched you, it as a phase, though, couldn't they? Part they of the next um, phase and might give them a bit of a, a I don't know, extra 
yeah. it would certainly have got the nerds excited. If you if you'd have announced a Runaways movie as part of the next phase, comic nerds would be giddy. Yeah, but it's not. It's nothing to do. I bet it's, it's nothing to do with the MCU, is it? Oh no, it's completely. They don't want anything to do with it. It's all run by a TV network, isn't it? Yeah, they've, they've given Marvel have given them the license to do with. Well, isn't it on a separate Marvel platform like the DC it's... DC yeah. Titans? Are you going to watch that? Probably not. Really. I don't know. I might do. I don't. I don't really have the time to watch TV stuff. I watched this purely because it was one of my favourite books ever. So I wanted to see what they did with it. Whereas Titans, I've never really been into Titans. Hmm. It's getting confusing in America. How rather than I mean, I've already got a million and one cable channels and everything. And now this suddenly... this show is presented by Hulu. It's a Hulu program that's on Sci-Fi here. Right, okay, so I don't know what Titans is actually streaming on. It's some sort of DC platform, and then there's Stargate Origins has been put on some sort of Stargate platform, and I'm thinking surely there's not enough content in the Stargate universe to do your own yeah, platform for it. Stargate, Star Trek, Star Wars are all the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it all seems a bit mad. Like They all seem doomed to fail unless they just flog their titles to Netflix, Amazon, and so forth. It's a bit odd. Mm. Mm. Right, is that it for movies and television? No, 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 no. Oh. It's uh, Infinity Wars out next week, isn't it? Yes. That's and Pab's right. already seen it. They I sent wish. him that instead I of wish. God of War. Mm. Mm. If only, if only. I would take that, <laughs> that swap <laughs> right now. Uh, um, out the day no, after the what have I watched? Um, I'm doing my usual Dragon Ball Z watch. Uh, we are well into the Freezer saga now. Please don't that say won't mean that anything when you're to talking you. about Dragon Ball Z, for goodness sake. Make it clear yeah. it's you, not we. Yes. Um, <laughs> I've started watching Westworld again, because Westworld starts again next week, season two. Um, so I want to get caught up on that. So I've started watching that again. I'm four episodes in. I never made it through that. I got it's, three or four episodes in and just gave up. It's so much better the second time through when you know, when you want, know more about it. Me. You see the tells and the things that are around. You know things that you shouldn't know at this, this stage, and you see the things that they're building up to, and the, the little little Easter eggs and the secrets that are in there that you go, "Oh, that's referring to something that's going to happen in three episodes' time." All right, I might just go and watch the last episode, then go back and watch it from the it's, beginning. It's a, I mean, no, that won't make any sense at all. They that, didn't make no. any sense at all, regardless. That's why I stopped. <laughs> oh, it was complete me. nonsense. Trust me, you, 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 it will make... It, will... it does make sense by the end of the first season. But... Yeah, I, ain't, I am not giving it ten hours to start making sense. I gave it three or four. It didn't make any sense. But you liked Lost. Yeah, but that made... They didn't... The, it, Lost layered the confusion on later. Uh, it's season one of Lost, it was a really basic premise. They'd landed on an island... There's a monster there that's trying to kill them. They want to try and leave. It was so, it was simple. It just got really complicated later by the time we were all hooked in. Yeah, I had no idea what was going on sometimes in Lost. Like, what, Kevin? But you knew what was going on in season one, didn't you? Yeah, just exactly. after that. I was yeah, like, cool. what was happening? But it's, it, Westworld is very... It is Westworld clever. launches straight into season five of Lost. And expects mm. people to go with them, and I ain't it's, going with them. It's it's really clever what they do. Um, the last thing we have both watched, Kev, is WrestleMania. Aha! We have. I mean, that's only eight hours of my life. How could yeah. I forget about I, that? I, I cut that down to a measly four. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Fast you've not watched it. Then. <laughs> oh, 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 I watched it. I went. I don't need to see this one. Don't need to see this one. Don't need to see this one. I enjoyed the what did I enjoy the, the tag match, which with, one? Uh, which one? The, the one with Braun and Strowman and Nick, <laughs> the was, youngest was, tag champion in the history of wrestling. That, that was that was a that was a a plant. That wasn't it. That wasn't. Yeah, it was one of the referees' kids. Right. Okay. That make. I was going to say that that is just some random kid just standing in the. That made me chuckle when he tagged him and he got in. Anyway, no, I'll just tag back out again. That I enjoyed that. Immensely, um, the Undertaker thing was a bit of a farce. That's because he's older than my dad, and you know, don't do moves it. Moves worse than he does. He does, yeah. But people, people love it, don't they? They love yeah. it. Yeah, but yeah, it just like 
Is this what John Cena's come to now as well? They just well, I think they were, they, were, they, were, they were getting their John Cena punishment in early. Yeah. Oh, I see. You're ruining our little. You're ruining this season of Total to be, Bellas, are you? To, to be right. Fair. In that case, Mister Got Cold Feet can't get married. Have a two minute defeat against an old man at WrestleMania. That will learn you. To be fair, I enjoyed the kept popping back to him in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> the moment, and then he just zipped off up the ring. That was a that was a good moment. I enjoyed that. Yeah, that would be just, a gift forever. John Cena, John Cena, Cam. John Cena was, leaping over a barrier and racing up the ramp. That's that was good. It's going to be was, everyone, and especially in light of what's happened since. That's uh, mm. that's him legging it away from his own wedding. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, don't get me wrong. It was a good. It was good enough. Event as it, as I it always it very much. I always as it always seems to be. There's always there's always lulls in it, but it's it's fine. It's never it's never all exactly it's never awful, but it's never amazing at the same time. <laughs> Some good matches in there, but yeah. Um, well, don't worry, Pab. You've got the greatest Royal Rumble coming up next week. Now. Yeah, I did see that. Is that, that a man Royal think? Rumble? That should be fun. It's on Friday got... tea times. It's from Saudi Arabia, so it's five Thank o'clock you. next Friday. So that will still be on while we're recording next week's show. Uh, we'll the... be, uh, we will be watching a 50-man Royal Rumble while we're recording. Is that a real thing? Is that, it's that a real like, thing. It, it's I mean, the is thing. It gonna, it's not going to take that long, though, is it, surely? It's like a, every, a three-hour every, rumble. Every title is being defended. There's like oh, right. 11 so matches added so far. They're actually, because it's basically been paid for by family, Basically, WrestleMania was the pre-show for the show. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, the big show's coming back. The big show. Yeah, it'll be in it. Okay. Cool. It'll... Everyone's in it. Okay. Every... I've not seen Everyone. It for a while. Have... Oh, I'm such a bunch of nerds. The great yeah. Carly's going to be in this. He's on the. Of course he is. He's on everything. He's on everything over there, isn't he? Yeah. WWE yeah. India have got him on the on the as their banner thing. And like, really? Exactly. Not great, Carly. Um. Yeah. So in the hall. So everybody can, uh, everyone can enjoy me commentating on a 50-man Royal Rumble while we're recording a podcast. That'll be a reason to tune in next week. Oh, someone else has just been slung over the top. And with them needing to have 50 people in it in addition to all the other matches they've got as well, I'm hoping they're going to bring back the Bushwhackers and all sorts. Just get all these, they've get everyone to. in it. You've got to. Nicholas will be in it. I hope Nicholas is in it. <laughs> he knocks out Kane or something like that. Yeah, he'll be in it. Everyone will be in it. That'll be great fun. I'm looking forward to that now. Yeah, good. You it's should. Superb. There you go. That was Wrestle Corner, Sheepdog. Now you know how Anna feels during the comics bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, talking of comics, and a, a segue from wrestling. Goodbye. Um, <laughs> I'm, no, it's not that. It's because I am I am tired. I've been looking at my title. in my segue. Goodbye. Two hours. I'm just going to. Okay, Where can people find you on the internet, Sana? I'm at Miss Illusion. That's I'm on around. Twitter, isn't it? Yeah. Anna underscore Illusion on Instagram, which is your new Possibly. favorite these days. That it's definitely. <laughs> I'm trying to get Anna lots of Instagram followers. Sent a load to you earlier today through the yeah, vlog. I'm like, now like, trying to send them to you through the podcast. Go follow Anna on Instagram. I take lots of pictures. She does take lots of pictures. If she ever releases, if she ever releases a video of me crying on the floor, that'll be on Instagram, <laughs> on her Instagram. So if you want to see wow. that, that's where you want to be. You want to get um, to thousand subscribers, please. I don't know what I'm on. Probably over. I have no idea. I don't really look at Instagram properly. I need to learn to use it. I still don't really understand. Mm. Um. Anyway, bye bye, Anna. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Now, getting back to my Ooh. book. Bouncy took me and Pab to a new yes. comic shop. We had to Hipster walk past one. a load of sex shops in Hipster we did. Soho. I don't think we did. I don't think we did. I think he just wanted us to just to yeah, experience I think Bouncy that. Bouncy just wanted to take us past the sex shops. Um, <laughs> he also made us stand in several parks. That was um, weird. That was, he, he, he walked <laughs> us through a garden area, and I thought it was just a through path. No. It's just a dead end, just in a garden, in like in someone's back garden in London. Although it was right in the middle of Soho, and apparently you can, well, we saw when we were down there, you can book this convention hall for something like 80 people for 300 quid for the day in Soho, in the middle of this garden. So we're holding MGPX in Soho. Sheepdog, get on it. Bouncy's got okay. all the details. 
Nice. Um, but yeah, we went to a place called Gosh Comics, which is a nice hipstery comic book shop. Yeah, it is. Uh, just right. It's kind of just around the corner from, from Forbidden Planet. Don't worry, Sheepdog. It'll be on the route when we do normal comic <laughs> shopping. Yeah, we've got to do a full route. Though. Um, but because it's an awesome hipster shop, they had the the rather than it being loads and loads of stuff alphabetical order they had all that but they also had this massive table full of all your hipster comics yeah, and i'm on the website in, now mixed in amongst the hipster comics there was an andre the giant biography andre mm-hmm. the giant life and legend and i mean this it ties back into the tv and movies thing so i also watched the andre the giant hbo documentary this week oh. as a result of this book because i read this book it was superb so i then went and hunted out the documentary that came out last week as well um andre the giant is a fascinating man um mm. i suggest you all read this book it's andre the giant life and legend by box brown it's it's one of these that it's it's not a silly wrestling comic it's a proper biography of a man who just happened to be a wrestler in the same way as some of the other biography stuff that I've read in comic form in recent years. And it's, it's, it's respectfully done. It tells his backstory. It talks about his, all his health problems that he had as the result of his, uh, his basically extra growth hormone that made him into this enormous chap um, and how he refused to have, surgery on it to stop it because he didn't want to harm his wrestling career so he basically died young because he didn't never stop growing and he outgrew his organs and it was kind of all self-inflicted is the general moral of the tale he could have he could have pulled the plug on it at any point he was told 15 years before he dies there's this surgery you can have you'll stop growing and you'll be fine and you'll live as long as you want to live and despite the fact he was already seven foot four at that point or whatever it was, he said, no, I don't want to, don't want it to harm my wrestling career. Well, you're already seven foot four. How much bigger do you need to be? You've been wrestling for 20 years. I think you'll be all right if you just stay seven foot four. No, no, I d- don't want to risk it. And uh, put his wrestling ahead of everything. Basically, by the time WrestleMania and Hulk Hogan body slamming at WrestleMania comes around, he can barely walk. Is the reason he moved from wearing trunks to his over the shoulder singlet thing is so that he could wear a massive back brace under it. And he got out of bed like two years before and just got up, tried to stand up, and his ankle just snapped because he was so big and so heavy. But he still forced himself through a little bit of wrestling just because he wanted to do it and liked money. <laughs> Plus, you can drink over a hundred or could drink over a hundred beers in one sitting. I'd heard that about him, hundred years or whatever. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was... is probably something to do with his death. <laughs> oh yeah, he um, both from this book and from the documentary, multiple multiple sources all saying yeah, he just drank constantly. He would drink a hundred plus beer, drinking a hundred beers in a sitting wasn't unusual for him. He'd drink four bottles of wine with his dinner. He could just sit and down a bottle of vodka. And I mean, it'd be American it. beers, so they would be smaller and not as strong. But it's still the equivalent of having like 30 pints, I should think. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, like... And just feeling a bit of a buzz. He's more of a double Pumba than a 10 times <laughs> URI sort of thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was um, just general Andre the Giant facts. I found them all fascinating, <laughs> learning about the man. Um, and it made me go and watch some some of the last clips of him because he was he was still attempting to wrestle in like 1992. WWF wouldn't have him anymore at that point. They said, "No, seriously, you need to stop. You can't even you can't let go of the ropes when you're in the ring." He would literally be on the side of the ring, sort of hanging onto the ropes to keep him upright, and they they wouldn't let him wrestle anymore. But he was he went off to Japan still and. There's just this, his last match is on YouTube and goodness me, is it, it's terrifying to watch. He can't walk. He looks like he's struggling to breathe and he's still throwing himself around a wrestling ring and falling over painfully slowly. It's like watching someone cut down a tree, but it's not the last whack of cutting through the tree. You kind of see him fall in stages as they're whacking at his legs and it's so slow and looks like he'll never get back up again. And then he died about a year later. But 
It's a fascinating life story told really well in comic book form. And it's Andre the Giant, Life and Legend. Go by. Mm. Mm, indeed. What have you two been reading? Uh, for me, I think the most notable thing I've read this week is the Superman 1000, well, the Action Comics 1000, sorry. Oh, um, yeah. Which was all right. It's as expected, just loads of sort of short yeah, so it's stories. An Pretty much. I mean, I I liked most of the stories. Some of them you kind of thought, really? You, you've been deployed for a major milestone and this is the story you chose but um there was a, you know one particularly good one in there that i can't remember who wrote it now but it was like they um they'd almost established why superman's early origin like so you know 80 years ago the first like load of comics he was just a strong guy with an s on his chest you know he wasn't there was no story about him he was just a, a random strong man type person who was a hero um and this writer has turned it into something canonical where um vandal savage has sent him back in time and and like stolen his his whatever he's got some power he's, he's affected him he sent him back in time he's had to relive his entire life um without abilities and get get powerful and become superman again and meet his family and he's been in this loop and he's finally broke out of it or whatever and it was just one of those where you thought that's quite a clever way to basically justify the fact that if you think too hard about this there's a load of plot holes to it but they've just written a quick little story that real nerds can go well actually no it's all part and parcel so i like that i thought that was quite cool but um some of them seemed a little bit, as I say, a little bit weaker. It seems like lately they've been doing quite a few fillery. I mean, I saw someone ranting about it on a on a review forum after I'd been um, reading it myself, and it was I, I kind of I'm inclined to agree with him a little bit that there was quite a lot of uh, comics lately where it felt like it was reaching deadlines and they've just stuck something in, like I mentioned before the comic about uh, the Justice League just nipping to a cancer ward and taking all the kids to the moon for a trip and it was like just it was just a really odd story where you kind of thought really okay that's that's your run is it that's what you're putting out this month just a random little story that is harmless but completely nothing to do with any of the other stories um i guess they do that from time to time it, but putting it in the 1000 seemed slightly odd it's what it is cheap dog it's yeah just, uh... but... I suppose they appeal to some people. It, it's it was eighty pages as well, so I guess yeah. I mean, I, I'll, I'll get it. At some point. It'll, it will turn up some point from Spin Planet. You know what they like very casual mm. in posting things. So it'll I turn liked up it. Next I, week too. I finished reading it and was like, I like that. I'm glad I read that. Good. I look forward to it then. Mm. Is that all you've read, Sheep Dog? Uh, all I've read that isn't like midway through a series yeah. that I've already spoken about. I've got nothing special to say about them. Okay, super. Well, I have read, this week I have read uh, Green Lantern Earth 1. Ooh, cool. Yeah, because I've never, I've never, I kind of like the idea of Green Lantern, but never known where to jump in and get like a a backstory and everything, because I've never known the origin of Green Lantern. I don't know. I couldn't tell you what the origin is, because these Earth 1 books don't tend to be canonical just, do they? Um, the green lantern in and our sector dies and the ring goes to hal jordan well this book um hal jordan is uh he works on a like he's uh like a a miner for in a space miner who's like mines comets and stuff like that and he's he works for this big corporation who that mine comets for rare metals and sources of fuel and what have you. Um, and he digs up this spaceship. It is, it's like a, an old spaceship. It's been buried there for an age. Um, and he comes across this ring, which is the Green Lantern ring, and he's got the, the little little um, the little lantern as well. Um, and then he realises that he, when he puts it on, he gets these powers from it. But it only has so much power, and he and he he classes it as 
as a tool. He's, he, he, uses, he calls it a tool. of. It's not like a gift or anything like that. It's a tool that he mm. uses, like a tool of his job. Um, and he, in doing, in, in powering this ring up, and um, it's only got like a certain amount of charge, and he has to charge it up on the lantern. I don't know if that's a real thing that goes on. I don't know. It probably yeah, is. Um, it's his willpower. Yeah. So the more willpower he has, the more powerful the... Well, the this green. this doesn't seem more like that yet. Yeah, maybe. He, the, yeah, he, he... But it has a finite amount of power in the ring, and he has to charge it up by putting it against, like, contactless power up, charge up against the lantern. Yeah. Um, And in doing so, he triggers up the Manhunters. Uh, are Manhunters a thing in the Green Lantern world? Yeah. Yeah, so he triggers a Manhunter that's in this spaceship... Who, who obviously had killed this this previous lantern, um, and he manages to defeat it. But the spaceship he he gets he manages to get back to, get manages to get back to his spaceship where he is about to leave back for Earth, and they they've just witnessed this old big battle going on with this this manhunter, and he doesn't they they say we can't risk you coming on here because you could be contaminated and the radiation and all this nonsense. So he goes fair enough. And just sort of disappears into into the into space sort of thing, and I think it's somewhat to do with like he he gets I think he gets saved at some point by another lantern who picks up his distress signal as he's and he gets say he gets saved by this random this random big fella I, I don't even remember his name I don't even know if it it could it probably isn't any any canon whatsoever it could be I don't know because I don't know any of it I've um, just had a quick look on Wikipedia. Um, yes. The characters that are listed, Kilowog is the other uh, Green Lantern that's mentioned there. Yes. Probably him. He's a big beasty thing. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's a big old, like, monstrous looking character. And he helps him. But in doing so, his planet is, is it doesn't let anybody in. It keeps to itself, doesn't let anybody in. And it keeps the Manhunters away because it, they, no, no one comes in, no one goes out. They all keep to themselves. Um, but in doing, in bringing him in, it, it brings the Manhunters on this this planet, and then they they effectively flee because they're about to get killed anyway. Because um, the 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 planet's army didn't want him there anyway, so they get so they shoot off, um, and then go in search for other people, other lanterns. Um, they come across one who basically pins them against the wall and goes, "Get out of here! I don't want to know you." Um, so they they go they go on from there, and they get they end up they end up getting I think they get I think they get captured at one point to get onto the planet. Oh, where is it? Oh, where is the, the big like the sort the the whole the home world of where the lanterns were created and what have you? It's uh, it's I think of the, it's, it's like where it's just the OA. Oh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, where, it's where it's where they're I can't remember what they're called. Bloody hell. Like overseers or something, they're bosses essentially. They're like yeah. the little blue men yeah. that rule. Yes, well, there you go. Um, yeah. So this is where they, they, there is this one giant lantern on this planet, and it is, which gives everyone the power that they have mm-hmm. across the, the the universe. And it's been domed in. It's been domed in by the Manhunters. Um, and then you find out that the manhunt the manhunters were created by the people who created the lanterns because the lanterns were getting too above themselves or something like that. So hmm. the manhunters were the people that manhunters were sent out to to get to put lanterns in in the place sort of thing, and then they, they, they took it too far. The manhunters have become sort of sentient; they've taken it too far and just then become sort of like these big overseers of the world who just like just who just dominate everything and just take it take over everywhere. So Hal has to, he pretty much just get, manages to get into this big domed off lantern, recharges himself full power, and then starts smashing it up, which then <laughs> gives, them enough, gives them enough of a boost signal to get a number of lanterns to come in and try and destroy this dome, which they do. And then it gives that the signal again. And gives them all, they all charge up off it, and then they all start beating these lanterns. And it, it then, Starts off the the world of like this. These lanterns are these are the new lanterns who are gonna gonna fight the the manhunters and destroy yeah. don't destroy this manhunter become the new lantern got, core as it were. I got mixed news for you, I guess. Yes. So the Earth One series is I've not read it. It's basically a 
it I want to say it's not like a reboot. It's like a, it's set. It's obviously the multiverse. It's set on Earth One. It's set separate from the rest of the DC. Oh yeah, it's, it's going to be like a non-canonical it's, sort of. Yeah, it's it's it. not an origin story. You're, you're, um, well, it, it is, but it's not. It's not something that it, it's non-canonical, and it's, it's it's just a different take on the. It's not the, the Hal Jordan's origin story. It's a Hal. No, Jordan. yeah, exactly. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. It's just, um, it's just like it's like it's just like a story. Yeah. But they they so, all like that though. It's, yeah. yeah, but what I was going to say is, it's a hard place to start and learn about Green Lantern or any other. Oh no, I just, I, I mean, um, it gives you a, it gives you a rough idea though, as opposed yeah. to not knowing anything. At least, I, I don't know. I just, I like the Earth One books because they tend to be a bit different, a bit quirky. Yeah. They, they you made wonderful. me want to read them. I'm, I'm, I was looking through, I do like thinking, the Earth why one. haven't I ever bought these? Because the Batman one is amazing. The Batman one is, is, is superb, and the Wonder Woman one I thought was all right as well. Um. Yeah, they 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 are they're just like different takes on origins from what I can yeah. see, and they they're cool. They are cool, cool books. And I wish they'd do so. A, I wish that DC's films were as well constructed as the Marvel ones. But B, I feel like Green Lantern would be perfect for a Guardians of the Galaxy style setup because it's got the whole spacey, you know. Well, they tried setup. with that, didn't they? No, they did some cheesy, lame film with Ryan Reynolds, didn't they? They yes. didn't try and do like a full-on epic like Guardians is. Um, you know, it's it's in the proper... Because I was just looking again, there's no, there's only mentioned Green Lanterns in this, uh, in this Earth One thing, but you've got all the colours, you know, there's Red Lanterns. Well, there's, well there, there, is, there is... At the end... Oh, I don't know. I'll spoil it now, but there is... <laughs> There is at the end. There is a setup where there is the overseers who made the Manhunters are like, I won't make the same mistake again. And it pans down to like, to like, there's like a whole army and they've all got yellow rings. Yeah. So um, it's interesting because he has like a buddy in the original. I mean, it's not a spoiler talking about however many year yeah. old. Uh, 60 year old comics but his partner in uh, as a Green Lantern is uh, what's his name oh bloody hell Sinestro uh, yes. which is hilarious because he's got his name's Sinister he's an evil looking red guy but he feels like willpower is not the most efficient use of making power it's easier to create fear you know if so he uses the same concept to to make the yellow lanterns um and the idea is that yeah, the more afraid people are, the more powerful his his abilities are. So, you know, he rules by fear, he causes fear and that yes. kind of thing. Then there's yeah. like I think orange lanterns are just these insatiable hungry monsters who just feed off greed and there's the red lanterns feed off rage and then there's the pink lanterns that feed off love and um there's some weird purpley lanterns that I can't even understand what they feed off. It's a bit Mad, uh, they bright, um, darkest night and brightest day were two really good stories that covered off all the different kind of lanterns. There's black lanterns and white mm-hmm. lanterns, and all sorts, but it's really broad and cool and awesome. And yeah. like, I always thought Green Lantern was quite lame when I was younger, and learning more about it now, I feel like that's awesome. But this Earth One story seems really far fetched from far, detached. Sorry, from, it, from, it, from it, the main. It probably is. Um, like I say, but it's, it's meant to be. It's meant to be like, like I say, they all they all take an alternate. Yeah. Take on, well, it sounds like him starting off as a spaceman. Who's he's a yeah. I mean, he, and he, he yeah. used to be. He used to work for NASA, but when NASA went under, and he just he just worked on like like as a mining. Like like red dwarf basically, <laughs> sort of mining shit mm-hmm. uh, in the middle of space. So yeah, it's it's they're all. It was uh, written by a fellow who worked on Babylon Five apparently, so it's probably got that kind of. No, oh, well there you go, there you go. So yeah, that is all I've read. I mean, I bought a handful of books while I was there in London, um, I've, and I've started reading Redlands today, so that'll be done for next week. Um, and I did. I did like the the thing on Redlands. I mean, you asked me about Redlands, didn't you, Kev? At the time when I bought it, hmm. um, it's by the person who does the coloring for Tom King. Most of Tom King stuff is coloured by this this woman, um, and he's he's got it's like a forward at the start of this book, going, "I really don't want to like this book," <laughs> because I, it said it said as soon as as soon as we find out how good she is, she's not going to do my coloring anymore. <laughs> And she's the reason after my books come to life the way they do, because she's so good at 
with it, all this colouring and being it like the artist, so to speak. Um, but at the end, he does say this: this, this is amazing. This is a genuinely amazing book. Um, and there'll be more of that coming next week because, like I say, I've only read the first issue of that, and I'll finish that for next week. So there you go, a bit of a preview for next week's book. <laughs> Splendid. Um, that does seem to be our lot. So, uh, in a little bit of a callback to earlier on in this week's podcast, apparently this stuff I say now is real and it just pretend. So we do have social media stuff that you can follow us and get in touch with us on. Um, the Twitter and Facebook for the show I'm about to give you, they're not fake. I thought this was a six-year-long running gag that apparently they're manned by Sheepdog. Follow them. On Twitter, it's at MGUK Podcast. And on Facebook, it's facebook.com slash Mature Gamer Podcast. They're both real. <laughs> We also have our personal stuff as well. So on Twitter and Instagram, I am at Lelujo. I'm at RB6K. And I'm at Pab1986. Splendid. And of course, you can check out all my YouTube goodness at Lelujo.fm as well, which will link you up to both of my channels where you should go and check out this grand life. Mine's uh, YouTube.com uh, forward slash Sheepdog Says. I couldn't remember how to say all that. Um, where you can see me talk nonsense and go and subscribe. I'm one away from 200, so it'd be really good to get to 200. Oh, I, need, I need to hover over that unsubscribe button, and so as soon as you hit 200, I can take you back to 199 and just ruin your uh, day. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'll um, come back on my, my glorious resub when you hit 1,000. You're on 999, and I'm there going, ah, I'm number 1,000 as well. <laughs> starting to think 1,000 by June, uh, end of June was completely unrealistic at this point but youtube's weird it kind of comes in phases you never you never quite know when you're going to get a surge and when you get one you never know how long they... mm. it's yeah. super fun <laughs> see you next week boys and girls have a good week thank you very much for listening you're welcome pal <laughs>